second order passive filters have a very characteristic denominator. That denominator can always be rewritten in this form. There are two characterizing variables in this one. One is a characterizing time constant. As we had tau for the first order filters, it can also be tau in the second order filters. But pretty often you would also see an uppercase T with an index zero. T zero also shows up in the other term here. And then we have D, which is the damping factor or also called damping ratio, or just simply the damping of the filter. The first constant T zero can also be transferred again in the cutoff frequency or in the special case of second order filters. It is often also called the resonance frequency because that's where the elements resonate with each other. And the elements means for having a second order filter, you need at least two capacitors or two inductors or one inductor and one capacitor. So two inductor or capacitors, but two out of those components. The damping factor is very often also expressed through the quality factor or the quality of the filter. So those two are equivalent to each other, but used in different terms. And finally, based on the ones above, we can define the so-called bandwidth. The bandwidth of the filter, which is mainly expressing what bandwidth we have around the resonance frequency. Sometimes the term bandwidth doesn't make any meaning depending on the characteristic of the filter we have, but in other cases, it's a very important parameter for the filter. One implementation of a second order low pass is an inductor in series with the parallel connection of a capacitor and often the resistor is actually representing the load, could for example be the input resistance of the following stage. But to form the filter, you would at least need the inductor and the capacitor, and to adjust the damping, to adjust the quality factor, we also need the R. We can see down here in equation 136 that the characterizing time constant is defined by the values of the inductor and the capacitor. And remembering that the term behind the S is two times the damping factor times the characterizing time constant, we can derive D from the factor that is multiplied with S, knowing that T0 is in this case the square root of L multiplied by C. We can see the low pass characteristics and the order as we have a double pole in the denominator indicated by the S square. And we also have a factor of S here, but we have no zero in the numerator and the factor up here is simply one. We again have our pass band. That is where the inductor shorts the input voltage directly to the output and the impedance of the capacitor is so high that we can actually model it as an open. This defines our passband, in other words, down here. The stop band is for frequencies above the resonance frequency, where the capacitor is a short, so we have no voltage across the output terminals of the filter, and the inductor is also contributing by its high impedance and not letting any current pass through. Or in other words, the inductor blocks all the voltage and the remaining current coming from the inductor is shorted by the capacitor and no current is flowing through the resistor. At the resonance frequency, the resistor is determining the behavior of the filter as the resistor also adjusts the damping or the quality factor that we experience at that resonance frequency. On the next slide, we will have a look at what that means graphically in a Bode plot. So we have the pass band at low frequencies, the stop band when we are suppressing the signal, 
And here we are comparing it to a first order filter, the black line from the first order filters that we have seen previously. But then a second order filter also has the area of the resonance in between, which depends a lot on what quality factor we are looking at. In the passband, the phase starts at zero degrees for low frequencies and towards frequencies approaching infinity, the second order low pass filter turns the phase by minus 180 degrees. That is minus 90 degrees per pole that we have in the filter transfer function. Independent on the quality factor, the phase is going through minus 90 degrees at the exact corner frequency, the resonance frequency of the filter. 10 powered by zero is one. So this is exactly normalized to having the corner frequency in the middle of the diagram, both for the amplitude and the phase. Now the asymptotes of the amplitude are actually disappearing behind all the other lines, but we can see the comparison to the first order. Furthermore, we have the influence of the quality factor. The lower the quality factor, the higher the dampening, that means the lower the amplitude is at the corner frequency. And also the slower the change of the phase from zero to minus 180 degrees. However, for high quality factors, you even can have gain in the transfer function. That means the output voltage can be higher than the input voltage without having an amplifier in between. It's a passive network only, but the inductor and the capacitor are resonating with each other. And therefore the transfer function has a value of higher than zero dB. And also the phase is getting steeper and steeper and changing faster and faster. The closer we get to the cutoff frequency or the resonance frequency where cutoff frequency and resonance frequency is the same thing in this case. The major difference for a high pass second order filter is that we switch the capacitor and the inductor position in the circuit around. The denominator stays the exact same as we had for the low pass, but now we have a double zero at the frequency zero. So compared to the low pass filter, we have the inverted behavior of the components with respect to the frequency. At low frequency, now the inductor shorts out the voltage across the output and the capacitor blocks all the current coming from the source and doesn't let any signal pass through to the output. So that's our stop band. The pass band is at high frequencies. In that case, the capacitor lets all the signals through, the inductor is an open, and therefore we have the maximum voltage across the output of the filter for those frequencies. In between, the resistor dominates the behavior of the filter and adjusts the damping, which is equal to the quality factor. So this time around, the Bode plot starts with the stop band at low frequencies and the phase is already 180 degrees for those lower frequencies. In the other end of the spectrum, the filter is in its pass band, lets all the signals through and doesn't influence the phase of the output voltage compared to the input voltage. That means the phase of the transfer function is zero. In between, we have the resonance frequency of the filter, the corner frequency, and that's where all the action is. The phase is turning from plus 180 degrees to zero, and the quality factor of the filter defines both the so-called overswing or underswing in the amplitude, as well as the behavior of the phase on how fast it's actually turning from the plus 180 degrees towards zero. Compared again to the first order high pass filter, 
The first order high pass filter had a slope of 20 dB per decade in the stop band, but the second order filter is rising twice as fast with 40 dB per decade. That means 80 dB across the two decades that we are looking here at the left hand side of the diagram all the way to the resonance frequency. And for the phase, it's equivalent. We're starting at 180 degrees, whereas the first order filter started at 90 degrees because it only had either an inductor or a capacitor. And each of those components can turn the frequency only by 90 degrees by themselves.